Coming up on Rob on the Road, more day trips. Experience Old Sacramento. We'll explore one of California's most historic and well-preserved downtowns. Take a walk on the wild side at Sacramento Zoo, where large and small wonders are hanging around. A drive to Santa Rosa lands you in the middle of Sonoma's Serengeti, Safari West, home to mammals and birds from around the globe. We'll stroll through the aviary, the centerpiece of this sanctuary. And a California fall tradition is open year round. Discover Apple Hill in Camino, where we'll tempt your taste buds and share the history behind this popular destination. Rob on the Road, a decade of destinations. More day trips starts now. And now, Rob on the Road, exploring Northern California. Are you ready for more delightful day trips? We are, and I'm glad you're joining us on this journey through California. We begin with a trip to Old Sacramento, where history is alive at what's been dubbed Sacramento's front porch. This is the birthplace of California's capital city along the banks of the Sacramento River. When it comes to Old Sacramento, we have the expert in Northern California for you. Good to see you, Paul Hammond. Hey, Rob. Welcome to Old Sacramento. It's so nice to be here. We've been looking forward to this. Paul is with California State Parks, and this entire area is a national landmark. There's so much history buried in here, modern as well as old. But going back to the beginning, um, starting in 1848, 1849, this was the Embarcadero of the California Gold Rush. John Sutter Jr., so John Sutter's son, John Sutter Jr. saw opportunity to lay out a town here when gold seekers began rushing in. Mm. There were merchants and others that wanted to locate right here where the ships were gonna come up from San Francisco. So this became the commercial center of the California Gold Rush. What's very different from today, of course, is we were down perhaps 18 feet from where we are now. At the beginning, there were no levees. This was simply laying out of town right where the river washed ashore. Um, and of course, every winter or many winters, it tended to jump out of its banks and inundate the town. And so it's also a story of flooding. This is a story that has been with us since the beginning. Old Sacramento sprawls about 30 acres. Mm -hmm. And this is some of the earliest images. It really is. These are recreation structures, but you're looking at that 1849, 1850 period in terms of what these represent. And these are really kind of temporary structures. They're canvas sided, wood, early and easy building materials. In history, they really don't last very long. The Eagle Theater opened in October of 1849, and it's the first permanent structure, well, you know, semi-permanent, built in California to serve as a performing arts theater. Hmm. So October of 1849, well, back to that story of water, what happens just four short months later in January? Rain, more rain, lots of rain, and the waters begin rising. Remember, we're lower, and the river's just gonna start creeping out of its banks. The story is that they're actually in the middle of a play and the water begins rising in the theater. People are standing on the benches because the water's rising around them. The water gets up to the stage. This is before electricity, so they have candle and lantern lighting and that goes out. Oh, That's the end of the Eagle Theater in January of 1850 and it becomes unusable and gets torn down right away. And this is a replica of the original theater. Yes. And so these three buildings or what it would have looked like in 1849, 1850. This is fascinating to me. The Sacramento Now History Museum, this is where the original city hall was. Yes, uh, this building opens in 1854. This building's a replica today, but it certainly gives you some perspective about what's happening here. The city's beginning to establish some permanence. Now this building, was the original, not just City Hall, but it was the original mayor's office, the first jail. $120,000 to build it back then, that was a lot of money. Well, that's a fairly expensive structure for the time. That thing on the roof also represents the waterworks. 
You've got to have something to supply pressure to the pipes, and so that's where the water system for the city emanates from as well. Was there a tank up there? That is the tank. That's the tank? Yep. Wow! <laughs> that's so cool! See, I knew you'd be the perfect person for this. <laughs> All right, let's keep touring. We're now in the middle of K Street, and this building is incredibly historic. It is the oldest uh, structure here in Old Sacramento. 1852 is when the Lady Adams Building dates from, and at that early date, that means it's also one of the buildings that went through both fires and floods. It's got quite a bit of history trapped beneath those walls. So was the Lady Adams 18 feet lower? Absolutely. This fits right into the story of the raising of the streets and the buildings of Old Sacramento. Imagine everything lower. If you look down the alley, you can really see the streets getting lower, but actually it goes even further because you kind of tear down into the basements of these buildings. But if you can imagine us 18 feet lower, the process of raising this is done by, at the curb line, every building owner has to build a wall to the new curb elevation. It's got what are called buttresses behind it. And then the walls get built in front of each building. So, you know, if we were 18 feet deep, all of a sudden you'd have an 18 foot tall wall in front of your building, yeah. more or less. The city comes in, fills in the dirt. All of a sudden the street's 18 feet tall in front of your building. And now you, the building owner, have to decide what to do with your building. Are you gonna just abandon the first floor? or more likely, and what was done with most of the buildings down here, you're going to bring in a construction crew and they're gonna jack your brick building up to the new street elevation and build a basement underneath it. And that happened to the Lady Adams, as well as most of the structures in Old Sacramento. And that's where the underground tunnel system, yeah. that's where it came from. It's really a remnant of this whole process. I actually thought all of this dated back to you know 1850-ish, 1860, but this is the oldest one, 1852, that's standing. The beautiful Ebner's Hotel across the street is a replica. Correct. Not all of these buildings you know, made it to history, and some buildings, like the Lady Adams, just survived till today. This, this was Sacramento's Skid Row. It's really Interstate 5 that transforms this. The coming of the freeway puts the city at a decision point. Do we want to save this? Originally, the idea was to just mow this down. Mm. And the idea came to, no, let's move the freeway back a block and let's keep this original historic district. And the Ebner is actually one of the newest reconstructions in the city. There was a lot going on here at Front and K Street in Old Sacramento in 1863. It's all because the winter of 1861 and 62 was the worst one on record. The other thing that takes place in 1863, the city's now gearing up to raise its streets, but there's a transcontinental railroad that's been signed into legislation a year earlier by President Lincoln, mm -hmm. and it's gonna break ground right here at this foot of K Street, and that railroad has got a really big job. The city is giving the land to the railroad with one big proviso. You will build the levee here along Front Street so that you can build your wharf, and you'll build us a levee along what we know now as the B Street alignment. So the railroad's gonna build the levees in order to build its railroad on top of them. Quite a transformation from the period of flooding, and a lot of it because of the railroads. It, certainly, and of course in history, this whole waterfront is a bunch of railroad tracks, freight, passengers. This is the hub where the water transportation meets the land transportation in Sacramento. Welcome aboard the mighty Delta King. This is the owner, Mike Coyne. Good to see you, Mike. Rob, how are you? Nice to see you. Pleasure having you on board. Well, you and your siblings bought the Delta King, restored it to its glory. Thank you well, for our, doing that. Our pleasure, and uh, we're just so happy to have you here and happy to show you around. All right, let's go take a tour because you have the keys to get us in everywhere. I can get you everywhere. All right, let's go. Let's go.
We've just come inside the main entrance of the Delta King, and I have to stop right here. The River Lines, San Francisco daily to Sacramento, but get this, leave at 6.30 p.m., arrive at 5.30 a.m.? Well, it was normally around a 10-hour cruise. This was 11 hours, and that probably took into account when there was heavy tides or there were a lot of high river flows uh, so that they would still be on time. 10 hours to San Francisco. Okay, Rob, come this way, and we are now in the paddle wheel room. Look at this, Mike. Isn't that gorgeous? Wow. It's a wonderful view. You get to see the big, bright red paddle wheel, the bridge beyond, and again, the river reflections. Mike, that is a Sacramento view like I have not seen before. Well, there's only one place to see it, and that is right here. That's right here, and on Rob on the Road. And Rob on the Road. <laughs> Wonderful. We're sharing. Look at that. This is a recreation of the original. Uh, we got the plans from the Delta Queen um, for the, uh, the layout on this. Wow. All right, I found a view that we have got to go show. This is the Fantail. Ah, look at this, the Delta King Hotel. The paddle wheel, the tower bridge, old Sacramento waterfront. This is spectacular. Yes, it is. It's, it's drop dead gorgeous. It is drop dead gorgeous. Rob, you're going to want to come into this room here. It is a very special room on the Delta King. Oh, Mike, this is gorgeous. Isn't that sweet? This is our captain's quarters. It's uh, two levels. It includes the original wheelhouse area. Originally, this was like five different sleeping areas. So the captain was here, the pilot, the purser, there. All the officers' quarters were in this area here. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go up here. Well, not everybody gets to come up here, only those in the captain's quarters. This is the view that the captain would have as he was plying the river between Sacramento and San Francisco. When you're doing a show about old Sacramento and exploring this area and a lot about water, you have to do something on the Delta King. I mean, this is such quintessential old Sacramento. What does it mean to you to be the keeper of that? The Delta King is, is an icon, and uh, we're lucky to be here and happy to be here. We're, we're an international destination, and that's what old Sacramento is. This is a hint of what we are about to do behind the scenes of the Small Wonders exhibit here with Outreach Coordinator, Laura Kirkendall. Hey, Laura. Hi, good to see you again. Thanks for coming back. Yeah, glad to be here. You've been on the show several times now before. You bet, we love it. Inside caution exhibit entrance. This is exciting. It is. That lets all the keepers know that that's not just any door. That's an animal <laughs> door. And there are animals behind, but don't worry, we'll all be nice and safe. Would you like to go in? I would love to go in. All Before right. we go in really quickly, bats, bats and birds. And birds are inside. Hornbill, crested kua, small birds, and some guinea fowl. They look like spotted chickens. All right, let's go let's look. Let's go. <laughs> How can you not want to see that? I know, right? All right, the key to the zoo. Oh. And in you go, I'll let you go first. Oh, we are inside the exhibit. <laughs> Laura, look at this. Wow, and I just have to point out that Martin, our videographer and myself, went through a series of inoculations for rabies in case we were to get bitten and that is just something that is procedure. We'll do anything to get you behind the scenes. <laughs> it's just standard policy. All of us keepers also are rabies vaccinated, even okay. though our fruit bats really aren't at risk for having that. It's just a state policy and we continue with that. And we took part in that. You bet you did. Okay. All right, so we're heading down. Behind is where the bats are. <gasps> there are the bats. Did you see them? 
Now it's hard to tell, but there's a group of them here in the corner. Oh there are Lord. 20 of them. Look at them all in there. And that's exactly what they do in the wild. In the early morning, they'd all be huddled together for warmth, waiting to maybe go out and grab some fruit when the sun rises. Oh my Lord. Okay, and we're, we're good. Like We're not, good. Okay. No, no, they're not attack bats. They're not gonna fly at you. They're just oh waiting for gosh. the food rings. Look at one moving. They know that you have the food and they're pretty excited about that. Oh my goodness. All right, so, so when we hang the rings of the fruit from the roof, they're gonna start to come over. And the best part is, I also have some mashed banana, okay. which is their favorite. And they'll come over to you and you can hand syringe feed them some banana. Martin, do you see this? I just am in shock. May I touch, may I reach out? Unfortunately, they're not really great with being touched, but when you give them the banana filled syringe, then they'll be able to come out for a bit of a closer look. All right, let's do it. Come here, babies. Come here. This is banana. <gasps> Martin, come get in here. You see this? Uh -oh. <laughs> you have got to be kidding me. This is an African bat. Get out of here. Oh, now they all want it. This is unbelievable. Hi, babies. I never thought I'd say this, but bats are adorable. Which is one of the things you get to learn at the zoo, Laura. That's true. You know, these animals are both fascinating, interesting, and they have a really cool niche. They're very important animals. One of the things that people don't realize about bats is they are pollinators. They are really, really important by uh, dropping and being very messy. They help pollinate huge swaths of forests. And in fact, the rainforest area where these animals are found in Africa, these animals, these bats do over 80% of the pollinating in that area. Super important animals to have around. Pollinating, see I didn't know And the that. bats that we have here in Sacramento are insect eating bats. And we know what that means. Yeah. All those mosquitoes are getting gobbled up overnight, which we as people love. Look at their cute little tongues. Hi little baby. And that allows them to gather up all the fruit that they find out in the wild. And their teeth help them rip open the thick ah. pieces. Sorry. <laughs> they're, they're just fighting amongst themselves. Okay. One had to tell the other neighbor that it uh, wanted more of the banana. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Okay. Wow. The neat thing about this exhibit is it's a multi-species exhibit, and it accurately represents the animals that you'd find living throughout Africa, primarily in the eastern side. So we have an aardvark living with our fennec foxes, and we have a variety of birds living with our bats, exactly how it would be in Africa. Still ahead on Rob on the Road, did you know Apple Hill is not just a harvest time experience? It's a year-round treasure. We'll take a walk down memory lane at this delicious destination. But first, walk into the spiritual center of Safari West in Santa Rosa for close encounters with some of the world's most beautiful birds. We're at Safari West in Santa Rosa. Sonoma County, and this is a wildlife preserve. Good to see you. This is our tour guide, Nate Woodward. How are you? Great to see you as well. What a day. It's absolutely perfect. You guys picked an ideal day to come visit us out here. This is the Grand Aviary, and this is known as the spiritual center of Safari West. Oh, oh look right there. The hammer cop's welcoming you. I think he agrees. <laughs> One of the most updated features on our property, this is all pretty new to us here at Safari West, but another thing is we've had remarkable success breeding the animals within this enclosure. The bird is called the Waldrip Ibis, or the Bald Ibis, and they used to be found all over Europe, and it was said that they would guide the pilgrims to Mecca every year. However, nowadays they are so endangered that you really only find them in tiny protected reserves in uh, Syria, Turkey, and Morocco. And Santa Rosa. They just fly right in front of you. Are we okay to just walk right through here? Absolutely, so there's people walking through the aviary every day. The birds have a very natural environment, but they're used to the people coming to see them. Now, the big bird back there standing on the rock on right the there, rock. is that Queen Bee? 
Well, you don't recognize that one? That's the bird that brings babies right there. That's the stork. That's the yeah. stork, absolutely. That's the white stork from Europe. <gasps> Who is this coming to see us? Oh, well, this is one of my personal favorites in Look the entire at this aviary. Right here. Hi, this baby. is a demoiselle crane. Hi, demoiselle crane. Hi, baby. Come here, sweetie. The vibrancy of the color um, is as vibrant as the mission here because you're telling the story of wildlife and why it needs to be. Preserved. Well, that's why places like this exist. Uh, not everyone can travel to Africa to go see these animals in the wild. I can't. But people need to know how amazing they are. So we have our guests through every day. They come see our animals, and hopefully we're leaving them with an impression that wildlife is worth preserving on our planet. Fall means harvest time in Northern California, and Apple Hill is definitely an exciting adventure for you to explore. We are in Camino, just east of Placerville, home to more than 50 growers. Let's hop inside Larson Apple Barn. <laughs> and they've already put me to work, and I'm glad to do it. This is Larson's Bake Shop. And this Hello. is Lynn Larson. Mm. Good to see you. Good to see you too. And I could just say you are the queen of apples here because you run oh, it all. The customers that come, the apples that we grow, this is our life. Look at this. Oh, are those hearts on there? You know what? They aren't really intended to be hearts, but that's what they turn into, so that's our love to you. Oh. Well, there's a lot of love in here because there are two about two and three quarters pounds of apples in each Almost one of these. Almost three pounds in each apple pie. Fresh, woo, hot. These are the fresh and hot apple dumplings. All right, so may I? You may. Okay, you have got to tell me what this crust is. This is grandma's crust, great grandma's. We don't change it. It's an all vegetable crust. Look at that. Brown sugar, cinnamon, and butter inside the dumpling with a ooey gooey apple uh, cinnamon cider sauce that goes over the top. That is stunningly beautiful. Very simple, but the flavor is totally apple. Let's see. Oh. I feel like I'm at a wedding. Oh, hi, y'all. <laughs> you want a bite of my apple pie, honey? Come here. Eat it. You don't ask, you just eat. Oh, what's this? Is that hot? No, you can touch that. I want you to see this. That, stop it. Apple strudel. It's an apple strudel. I'll let you serve one to me. Oh my gosh. <gasps> and then we're going to serve that with hot apple cinnamon cider sauce. Oh my gosh. Made with fresh apple juice. So I'm clearly figuring out that Apple Hill is an eat your way through experience. It is definitely. And you can find amazing things at so many of the bake shops. Find your favorite wherever it is. The bake shop is right next to the center of the farm, Larson Apple Barn. You'll find more than 20 varieties of apples rolling through the washing belts and right onto the shelves to sell. These same machines have been turning apples for decades. You step inside of the apple barn and it is exactly what it says because these are everywhere. Big boxes filled with apples. And this is Ray Larson, who is the apple guy. Good to see you, Ray. Good to see you. Thank you for having us. Thanks for coming. What a beautiful place. Well, we kind of like to keep it up, and um, it's a nice place to come. It's a nice place to live. And it has been a place to live for your family since 1860. Yeah, I'm the fifth generation. The fifth, and your grandchildren would be the seventh. That's correct. I would imagine that your great, great grandparents would be so proud of you. Well, I would say they would, because they, they put a lot of effort and time. You think about leaving Europe and coming clear across the ocean and finding a place and then starting a farm. Mm -hmm. That was um, a real commitment on their part. All positive ripple effects. From what two people did. Two people. That's fascinating to me. 
Your museum here pays tribute to that as well. Pieces that are on a self-guided tour of the museum um, are things that your great-grandparents made. Yes, and or bought. Um, we have a picture of my grandfather in a suit. You look at him and you think, why was he in a suit? Because this was something new, different. It was the cutting edge. And it was dressing up for Yeah, or dressing up to get that picture. That's fantastic. The Larsons are part of an even larger family. Apple Hill is a year-round attraction, and this is the sign to look for. Apple Hill Growers, made up of more than 50 farms and ranches. The map is a great tour guide for every season. Flower farms bloom open in the spring. Famous wineries serve their spirits all year long. There's tree farms, even spas for relaxation and fun. Hey. I'm from Washington. Washington State? <laughs> yeah. Good for I come here to get apples. <laughs> Are you kidding me? No, from not. Washington State. <laughs> Fuji apples. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of fresh apples. Yes, it is. Where are these headed? Wyoming. Wyoming? Yes. By, by way of what? I'm, I'm taking them. You take them? Yeah. <laughs> by way of you. Yeah. This is the most picturesque place to live. Yes, it is. It's beautiful. It's Northern California. It is. America's playground. This is the best. What fun! Check out our website, robontheroad.org, for more day trips and destinations. I'm Rob Stewart. Thank you for joining us as we celebrate 10 seasons of Rob on the Road.